So this is the first Sunday of Lent, and uh, we often re- go back to this uh, passage, uh, the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, on this Sunday, because it is the actual purpose of Lent. It, it, you know, we fast for 40 days the same way that Jesus pe- fasted in the wilderness as kind of preparation for Easter. Uh, but it brings up a question that we need to kind of answer every year and uh, and really kind of address as well, which is why do we fast during Lent? Uh, why is it that, you know, Methodists, uh, your Catholic friends out there, uh, why does anyone who celebrates Lent uh, fast, give something up for it? Uh, and, and this is a really good question because uh, we should have a reason for why we're actually doing this. It shouldn't just be because, uh, you know, the rest of the community is doing it and you want to fit in. Uh, you know, the, you, you can do it, definitely do it as a justification for that. But the reality is, is there should be a sort of a deeper spiritual reason why you are doing this. Uh, so the central reason is, of course, that this is a way that we sort of commemorate the Jesus' time in the wilderness. Uh, and that we give something up for 40 days or just or fast for 40 days and, uh, you know, kind of as a way of uh, solidarity and to sort of experience what he did. And it's similar to how Jesus prepares, being prepared for his own ministry. We ourselves are preparing ourselves for Easter when we're observing, you know, Jesus's death and resurrection. Uh, but there are other reasons on top of that. The other reasons that I think we should be in kind of mindful of during this time and reasons which I would use to kind of encourage all of you to participate in this, uh, to, you know, to fast, to uh, to give up either a meal or something else in your life. If, you know, if giving up a meal is not necessarily something that you should do for health reasons or whatever, uh, you know, I would say, you know, uh, you know, if you cannot fast uh, due to health reasons, that's fine. That's when you give up other sorts of things and everything. Uh, but there, there are reasons to fast. There are reasons to participate in this kind of spiritual uh, practice. Uh, and one of the big, wa- the big reasons to fast is that it is a way to demonstrate Uh, that you have control over your body. It is a way to give something up uh, that you normally would do. So food is traditionally what is fasted. Uh, And to show that you are, your spiritual kind of being and spiritual meaning is more important than that one thing. Uh, You know, when you fast, you also should be trying to replace that with something uh, where you're trying to get closer and closer connection with God. That that it's part of the relationship with God. Uh, You can, uh, obviously there are fasts that are secular where you're giving up uh, you know, f- where you're not eating a meal, uh, intermittent fasting, I know is very popular. Uh, but the difference between kind of that secular fasting and the sort of more religious Christian fasting is that the point of Christian fasting is to get you closer to God, is to get that relationship with God. So you should be doing something spiritual uh, when you're not eating or not doing whatever it is that you've decided to fast. Uh, so that's one thing, you know, is it's to, to demonstrate that control, to w- even work on that control uh, within your own uh within your own life. Uh, the second thing is that it, fasting is a, also a way for us to kind of uh, remember uh, the suffering that Jesus went through on the cross. And uh, this is a little bit, this is something which I've kind of uh, taken from a ca- more Catholic priest. Uh, but, you know, there is something that I think is to be said for the, within the Christian walk, taking time uh, to kind of find ourselves in parallel with Jesus. Uh, and with Jesus' experience on the cross, by putting ourselves through a little bit of suffering. Uh, And I I, I say a little bit of suffering because obviously, you know, giving up a meal is not nearly as bad as, uh, as, you know, what Jesus went through on the, on the cross. But there, there is something in that kind of unity of suffering uh, that is very spiritually fulfilling. That is something that, uh, you know, can be very spiritually enlightening and fasting is a way to do it. uh, That obviously doesn't cause any real uh, long-term suffering in your own life, uh, you know, and, uh, and that, that is one of the things, you know, is that is, as we give this type of stuff up, as you feel the pain of hunger, as you feel, uh, you know, the pain of that desire of doing whatever it is you were wanting to do, or, you know, whether it's drink coffee, eat chocolate, you know, uh, uh, get on social media, play video games, whatever it is, uh, the pain of that absence is supposed to connect you 
with the pain that Jesus experienced on the cross. And even the pain of the early church of losing Jesus and having to wait for that period of time before he returned. And the pain that we experience right now as we wait for Jesus' own uh, second coming as well. Uh, and so in, in engaging in that little bit of pain, you're able to kind of find a sort of connection uh, with Jesus in that sort of route. Uh, so those are just a couple reasons. Uh, too fast, too fast during this period of time. I would encourage all of you uh, to join us in doing that. I know I myself am in, right in the midst of this in this fasting. Uh, and so uh, you know, and I would look forward to uh, you know seeing the works in all of your lives uh, if you engage in this practice. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you all to join me for our last worship song today. <laughs> 